in this video we are going to discuss about the generation of narrow band fm and wide band fm we have already done a video on the basics of frequency modulation or fm and in that video towards the end we have discussed what is the basics of narrow band fm and wide band fm okay so in this video we will be discussing about how to generate these signals and what is the equation for these signals okay so first let us see generation of a narrow band fm so before seeing the block diagram of generation we are going to see how the wave equation will be looking like okay so for the case of generally fm the equation is like this ac cos 2 pi fct plus 2 pi kf integral m of t dt where m of t is the modulating signal kf is the frequency sensitivity this fc is the frequency of your carrier wave ac is the amplitude of the carrier wave so here amplitude is same as that of the original carrier only there is a change in the frequency part since it is frequency modulation okay i hope this basics you know so here if you look into this equation this is actually a cos term right there is a cos term and in that there is two terms added together so if you consider these two terms are as a and b we can perform or we can give the equation for cos a plus b and if you expand cos a plus b in the above equation you will get an equation like this that is a sorry ac cos 2 pi fc of t that is a then cos 2 pi kf integral m of t dt that is b so this term is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b right and ac is common to both the terms okay so we have expanded cos a plus b as cos a cos b minus sin a sin b okay now for a narrow band fm we know that modulation or mod not modulation it is mod 2 pi kf integral m of t dt will be very much lesser than 1 okay and it is coming as an angle term to cos and sin so when the angle is very less we know that cos theta is approximately equal to 1 and sin theta is approximately equal to theta okay when theta is very much less than 1 so this approximations also we have to put here and on substituting you will get this term as 1 see here it has vanished and this term will be equal to its angle value okay so this is how you reduce the equation and find the value for a narrow band fm okay so the final equation is like this ac cos 2 pi fc of t minus ac sin 2 pi fc of t into this term now why this term is coming because we know that for small angles so, uh, for small values of theta the sin theta will be equal to theta so the theta term is as it is sin term has vanished okay so this is how you produce a narrow band fm equation now let us see how to generate this using block diagram okay so this is the block diagram of a narrow band fm generation and here we are going to feed our carrier wave here it is directly getting fed uh, fed to the summing unit and also to a minus 90 degree phase shifter okay our aim is to produce this equation okay so here to the summing unit we are directly giving ac cos 2 pi fc of t and see here in the final equation that we have to produce there is an equation and it is a positive and it is given to the positive terminal so it again it is a positive term itself so this term we have obtained okay now next we need to produce this term right for that what all things we require we require a ac sine 2 pi fc of t right we require a sine term now how to produce a sine term from the cos carrier signal so only thing is or one of the things or one of the methods is to phase shift the signal so if we perform a phase shifting to the cos signal we will be getting a sine signal right so in order to produce a sign signal out of a cos signal we are going to phase shift okay so it will be that is ac cos 2 pi fc of t is fed to the minus 90 degree phase shifter and we will be getting ac so it is not cos it is sine okay just a mistake please to correct it so it is a ac sine okay okay i will write it neatly it is sine okay so the, that is that term is sine 2 pi fc of t okay 2 pi fc of t okay so we have produced sine term 
by giving the cos term to the minus 90 degree phase shifter. So, we are getting AC sin 2 pi FC of T, right. So, this much of term we are getting, okay. Then, next what we need, we need a 2 pi KF. So, for that we are directly producing a block or placing a block here, 2 pi KF and, okay, and the other thing is integration m of t dt. Now, this m of t is our modulating signal. So, for producing this term, we are going to give our modulating signal to an integrator. So, this term will actually produce a integral m of t dt as output. So, the output here is integral m of t dt. So, these things are actually given to a product modulator. The product modulator will take the product of these two. There is integral m of t dt and ac sin 2 pi fc of t. Again, these two products or these products are multiplied with 2 pi kf and it is given to a, see here, it is given to the negative terminal of the summing point. So, this minus sign is also produced. Okay, so this is how you generate a narrow band fm, okay. So, I hope you can clearly see this, okay. Yeah. So, this is how you produce a term or produce an equation for narrow band fm. So, I hope you understood that how this entire equation is produced with the help of this block diagram. So, I will explain it in a brief words or in brief words. So, first we are going to uh, feed this AC cos 2 pi FC to a phase shifter and then we produce a sine term. Then, we are going to integrate our modulating signal. Take the product of these two again. The product is again multiplied with this 2 pi kf and it is given to the negative terminal. So, we will get a negative. So, this is how we generate a narrow band frequency modulated wave. Okay. Next, we are going to see about the wide band frequency modulated wave. So, the main difference between the narrow band FM and the wide band FM is just like the name is indicating for narrow band FM, the frequency range or the frequency of operation is very less. Whereas for wide band operation or wide band FM, it is having a larger range of frequency. Okay. So, the main difference is happening in the frequency and also in the modulation index. Modulation index is lesser than 1 for narrow band FM. For wide band FM, it will be very much greater than 1. So, there are two methods that we can adopt for generation of wide band FM. The first method is called direct method where we are going to use a voltage control oscillator and we produce a wide band FM. Then, the next one is an indirect method. So, in indirect method, what we are going to do is we are going to use a narrow band FM modulator or a generator. Then, we are going to multiply the frequency. Okay. So, the output will be wide band wave itself. Okay. So, these are the two methods which we can adopt for generation of wide band FM. So, let us see the block diagrams one by one. Okay. So, here for the direct method, we are going to use a voltage control oscillator. Now, the voltage control oscillator is a device which is going to produce an output signal whose frequency will be varied in accordance with the modulating signal. That is the amplitude of the modulating signal. Okay. So, here we can think uh, this generation method just like the generation of any normal FM wave. Okay. So, that is the voltage control oscillator method. So, the voltage control oscillator which will produce a output signal whose frequency is proportional to the input signal voltage. Okay. So, you can write that Fi that is the Fi is the instantaneous frequency of your wide band FM signal is proportional to M of T. M of T or the voltage level of M of T. And you can write Fi equal to Fc plus Kf M of T. So, this is this concept is actually just like the generation of a normal FM wave itself. Okay. So, we are actually considering that here the frequency range will be much greater. So, the generation is just like for a normal FM wave itself. Okay. So, this is the first method or the direct method. In the next method, we are going to use a narrow band FM modulator or a generator which we have already discussed previously. So, that thing we are going to put here and we are going to apply our modulating signal and the carrier signal. See, this is the modulating signal M of T. This is the carrier signal. I hope you remember that we have discussed this part for the previous session that is wide, for the narrow band FM session. So, that same block diagram you have to consider here and we are going to just feed our modulating signal and the carrier signal here and the output will be a narrow band FM normally because it is a narrow band FM modulator or a generator. 
but we require wide band fm right so we have to perform an additional thing which is called frequency multiplication so here the narrow band fm signal is taken as a input and the frequency of that signal is multiplied by a factor of n which is called the multiplication factor and we'll get a wide band signal okay so here there will be changes happening to two things one is the frequency one is the modulation index okay so the modulation index is also getting multiplied by n times and the frequency is get also getting multiplied by n times so we'll get a wide band fm or simply we can consider this thing as taking a narrow band signal multiplying its frequency and producing a wide band signal okay so that is a very simple explanation of the indirect method okay so these two methods you can opt for generating of wide band fm signals so in this video we have discussed about so here i hope you can see this part okay so in this video we have discussed about the generation of a narrow band fm signal and the wide band fm signal we have discussed in very simple words how can you generate a narrow band signal and a wide band signal so the main difference you have to keep this thing in mind that the main difference of these two signals is in the frequency component one is a low frequency signal one is a high frequency signal so in order to make changes in the frequency you are actually using the frequency multiplier and those component those, the components like that okay so these methods can be used for generation of narrow band and wide band fm signals okay so i'm really hoping that you understood the concept of narrow band and wide band signals how they are generated and if you want to have a basic idea of that please do watch the video on frequency modulation basics towards the end i have included this also okay so if you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up please do share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching